good morning welcome to my channel I have not even brushed my teeth today but I did wash my face sort of with my wipes because I'm lazy <laughs> so um I had a hysterectomy and I thought we would talk about it because why not some people might want to see a video about a hysterectomy I haven't even looked it up there may be a million of them but I just thought I'd tell you about it while we played with makeup. And um, since I haven't done anything to my face yet, we're gonna do that. Mm. So basically, I had a hysterectomy on September 30th. Today is November the 3rd. And um, as far as my pain from my hysterectomy, it's um, much, much better. It's been five weeks and um, uh, honestly, I'm kind of bummed because like being a busy person, a busy mom, I was just like, oh, I'm going to be off six weeks and I'm not going to have a new baby. I'm going to get so much done. No, mm -mm. you're not. Mm -mm. I, I couldn't. Um, I only recently was able to start doing laundry again without hurting. <laughs> I went in for surgery that day. I was pretty nervous. Um, I got to meet with the doctors and stuff. Um, I've never really had any problems with anesthesia or anything. I was just nervous because I'm a mom and you know, we always worry the worst things are gonna happen. So they told us that they, um, you know, they tested my blood type in case I needed a blood transfusion. Um, they tested, <laughs> they tested my blood to find out what blood type I was. And I ask a lot of questions. So I asked them, you know, how long um, is it going to take? And she said, oh, it should take about um, an hour and a half. But the doctor books two hours in the OR just to, you know, make sure that they have plenty of time. And then um, I was like, well, how much? I've been really, really trying to lose weight. And I was half serious and I was like so how much weight should I lose because um, I was just curious how much does a uterus weigh especially a uterus with tumors in it and um, she was like well normal uteruses are you know they're pretty light they don't they don't weigh that much they're like less than a pound and I was like oh okay well I thought maybe you know I would like feel like way less bloated and like maybe lose a few pounds you know whatever you could hope right <laughs> I kind of wish that I would have vlogged some but um, I'm not used to like cameras in public yet. <laughs> anyway, so <clears throat> the doctors came in. Um, I had, so I had like my OBGYN doctor and then she had an assistant because my uterus was so big. She thought it was like twice the size of a uterus. So she had another doctor come help and because he had, um, he had um, experience with like another special kind of camera that kind of rotates differently because they were trying to do it laparoscopically and keep my ovaries. So, um, so yeah, um, he also did like a bladder, like a sling, but I thought it was like a bladder sling, but it was just like for your urethra so that like whenever you sneeze, you didn't pee yourself. I don't know, I've had three kids, sometimes that happens. He didn't come talk to me though, just um, just my lady doctor did, just my OBGYN, and uh, she is so, so nice, and I love her so, so much, and um, she was like, yep, we're gonna do this, and I don't remember exactly what we talked about because I was literally so nervous, but, um, you know, she just kind of explained to me, I'm gonna be in recovery after, after I'm out of recovery, then my um, my husband and my sister can come see me because they were at the hospital. And um, I'll be in recovery for like 45 minutes to an hour, blah, blah, blah. So then they will, um, actually they did not wheel me back. Oh, I did put on a special gown that like warmed me up. It was not like a normal gown, it was like a special gown. And then um, she's like, you want me to warm you up? And I was like, no, I'm like sweating. And I think it's just because I'm nervous, but I was like sweating. They, I walked back to the surgery room and I got up on the table. They were talking to me. They didn't give me a countdown or anything. He's like, I'm just gonna give you some stuff to help you to relax. And, um, and you know, and so I was expecting like to feel drugged, which makes me nervous because 
I don't like taking medicine and I thought that I was just gonna like have a panic attack and die. <laughs> you know, like just you know, freak out. Because that's, that happens to me a lot when I take medicine. So anyway, um, next thing I know, I am asleep. Um, well, I didn't know I was asleep. I was just asleep and then, um, oh, they told me that my throat was gonna hurt because they were gonna like put a thing down my throat, which looks really gnarly, you guys. Like literally, if you watch like videos of people getting tubes down their throat, their throat literally expands for this tube. Um, I'm glad they do it because, you know, they do it for, to keep you, you know, breathing. <laughs> I woke up and the first thing I remember is I'm in the room with like these curtains around me. And um, so, I mean, you know, like recovery with these curtains around me. And I just remember feeling really hot. And I just kept saying, I'm really hot. Do you have a fan? Like, I'm really hot. And they brought in this... So they brought in this fan that um, clipped onto the arm rail of the post-op bed. And um, I felt a little better. I grow hair right here. I used to have a mole right there and I grow hair right here. Mm. Okay, so I was really hot. They brought me a fan. I didn't feel very good. And then I think that they wheeled me to a room and I was looking around and I saw like my old man and um, and he was there and my sister was there. My sister wasn't there very long, but my husband didn't really leave the hospital much, which is cool. Props to him. Props to him. And um, I pretty much rested most of the day. My children came to visit me because my kids were super, super nervous and um, they wanted to come shoe me, which I am happy that they came to see me because they love their mama. But um, so yeah, I, it was rough. Like, okay, I've had three C-sections. So it was like, oh, well, this is gonna be, you know, it's gonna be way easier than a C-section, you know, like it's no big deal. Well, they cut me open in three places around my stomach and on the right side of my stomach is where they did the most like digging and that's the biggest hole that they made, right? Well, I hurt so, so bad. And I don't remember, I don't know if it's cause I'm older, cause I'm 36 um, and a half. <laughs> but um, do we do that when we're older? Do we do like 36 and a half? I remember when I was a kid I did that cause I wanted to like feel older. But um, anyway, so this is my bed hair. I didn't even like <laughs> do my, my hairs for you. Um, so anyway, um, so yeah, I, it was rough and um, I had a catheter for the first day or, and a little bit into the second day and then they take out your catheter and since you I had that procedure done they wanted to you know make sure that I could pee right so they would I had to like go pee on my own which oh my god when I tell you like they they cut through your muscles in all of those places not just across the bottom so you literally can't use your stomach muscles like at all because it hurts like really bad, like all over the place, not just at the bottom, you know? So um, I used the armrest and everything. My hair is so gross, you guys. I'm really, really sorry. Mm, yeah, so what the hell was I talking about? Um, it hurt really bad. I had to get up and go pee on my own the second day and um, and it was, it sucked. Um, and the weird thing is like, I couldn't really feel like I had to pee like normal when I had to feel like I had to pee. It just felt like a lot of pressure, like I was bloated and I was like, oh, I think maybe I need to go pee. Okay, so when I went to the bathroom, it was like, I just sat there and like just tried to relax and like let pee come out. And uh, if I didn't, like I had to sit there for like 15 minutes, like a man sitting in there reading the paper, like I had to be in there that long. And um, it was annoying and I just, I, I did it. And I had to, you know, pee into a helmet, you know. So, and I drink a lot of water. I drank a lot of water while I was there um, to help myself pee and get used to peeing. But I drink a lot of water anyways. So there's that. But, um, so yeah, I had to sit on the toilet for a long time. They would do this little portable ultrasound. The nurse lady would do like this portable ultrasound thing to see if I emptied my bladder and I didn't empty it. Um, um, not even a little bit close to the amount that I'm supposed to. But 
<laughs> I sat in there forever and I swear I like let the pee out, I let the pee come out forever and and it still wasn't empty. So um, that was my biggest problem other than just feeling hot so they kept a fan in there on me. Um, they kept my ovaries so it wasn't like a hormonal thing. That was my biggest issue and so um, my last day they kept testing me and um, they were going to make me go home with a catheter um, but then they decided that since I am I'm peeing a lot I'm just not emptying my bladder fully they were worried that I was going to get a bladder infection or like you know like a urinary tract infection they sent me home with a home catheter set um, and they like were showing me how to use it. The nurse was really kind of immature about trying to show me how to use it. Like she acted like really uncomfortable to talk about it, which is weird because I'm like, hello, aren't you a nurse? But uh, anyway, she was trying to show me how to use it, which I had no intentions of using it unless of like, I felt like I needed to, which I know is stupid because I should just listen and do what the nurse or the doctor told me to do. But I wasn't feeling that at all, especially since I literally felt like I was, um, yeah, I felt like I, basically when they do your hysterectomy, they do the belly part and they cut everything apart and then they pull everything through your vagina. So they have to open your vagina and open everything and pull everything out through your vagina. And my uterus turned out to be eight times larger than normal. And um, my surgery took almost four hours and I lost a lot of blood, but my levels were still like there. My levels were at 10, whatever level that is, the blood level or whatever. And so she didn't do a blood transfusion because she thought my body would naturally um, be able to, like, I guess, make more blood. I don't know. But um, anyway, I was really, really sore. And she said that she took out my uterus in pieces. And, like, they really struggled to get all of it out. And um, so my I felt like I had, like, the most sex I've ever had in my life, but in a really bad way. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So it was like it was like you walk so like you know like you know like you you've you know you know <laughs> I was really really sore and um so when she was like oh do this home catheter thing I was like girl come on now <laughs> um mm. I, I mean if I really have to I will okay you know what I mean so anyway when we left the doctor prescribed me Dilaudid a paper prescription and um and when we left i think we left on the third day and um um the nurse was that like confused like she just always forgot she was like a really bad server at a restaurant where yes for water she goes to get water she helps other people or whatever and then she comes back with something else and you're like where's my water and they're like oh yeah i forgot your water and then they go back and then they might bring you the water but then they might bring you something else and they you know what i mean like just a really not focused i don't know what her deal was kind of thing which this is really weird because the hospital i went to is a really good hospital i've had two of my kids there and usually i have like a great experience and they're wonderful but this was not a good experience Experience. So um, anyway, she basically annoyed me. Apparently she forgot to give me my prescription because when we went to the um, pharmacy to fill it, just in case, because I, first of all, I'm probably had no intentions of taking the prescription um, because I don't like taking medicine, but just in case, I, you know, we were gonna get it filled. Well, she did not even send it home with us, which was very sweet of her. Just kidding. And we called, well, my husband called and was like, um, we went to the pharmacy and we couldn't find the script. Um, are you sure that you gave it to us with the paperwork? Well, whoever was on the phone was like really, really rude to him and was basically like, yes, we gave you the script. We're not giving you another one because you are 
they acted like he was a drug seeker, like he just wanted it. Which the weird thing is, like whenever you get a script like that, the pharmacy knows if you filled it or not. So if he didn't fill it and the hospital knows that, then why couldn't they just give him a script? You know what I mean? And then he would just get in trouble if he did it again. I don't know. That's just kind of how I thought of it. Like, why wouldn't it be like that? Why wouldn't, why is it such a big deal? So that's not how they treated the situation at all. And so I didn't have any medicine. Um, my husband went to the pharmacy and got me Tylenol and um, like ibuprofen to rotate. I think that's right, right? Tylenol and ibuprofen. Anyway, um, yep. Yeah. And so I, after having my guts pulled out and having all those complications and my sore vagina, I basically had Tylenol to help me with the pain. <laughs> I am strong. We are women, hear us war. So anyway, yeah, that's basically um, my recovery was, um, note for you, uh, lay down. St I have a recliner chair in my room that doesn't belong in my room, but it's right next to me. Currently it's full of clothes, don't touch me. And um, I sat there most days. Uh, note to self, note to you, do not have your phone up very loud because if you're napping and people call you or text you, it will scare you. And do you know what happens when you get scared when your um, tummy was cut open in three different places? You, you, you like flinch and your stomach flinches. And I literally, um, the phone rang and I, it scared me because it was right next to me and I like sat up. Oh my Jesus, that was the worst fucking pain I have ever felt in my life. And it was like, um, weird. It was like on the right side, you know, people with abs, how they have like the six pack and then they've got like the long ones on the side. It was almost like it was like that because it was all the way from the bottom to the top, not the incision, but like a muscle. And then it also pulled around the back, around my back. And ever since that happened, my whole recovery, and I don't know if it has anything specifically to do with that happening, but um, the rest of my recovery was pain right there. So like, I couldn't bend over and shave my legs for like the longest, like, it was just really rough. It was hard, way harder than I thought. And then like, now we're at the point where I'm getting ready to go back to work. My doctor said that if you have a sit down job, They'll let you go back after a couple of weeks. But since I'm a mailman, she did not want me to go back because she did not want me walking 15 miles a day. And she also did not want me to carry um, more than a milk jug for um, six weeks at least. I see her again tomorrow. Um, I tried to be productive a little bit um, after surgery and I regretted it quickly after. And I'm kind of to the point in my recovery where I've been home for five weeks now and it's almost like, uh, it's like almost like depression almost. I just, there's so much to do and I feel overwhelmed and I'm like stressed about money, Christmas, bills, my car, my sense car broke down while I was off and I can't fix it. Um, like so much, so much is going on. And like, I'm super like overwhelmed, you guys. And I just like, it's like part of me really wants to go back to work, like, but part of me wants to try and get some things done at home. And, um, but another part of me wants to lay in bed in the dark and just not be around anyone. So I feel like if I am at home all week, am I really even gonna get anything done? <laughs> Is, am I even gonna do anything, so. Um, there's that but yeah I just I'm just in like a weird state right now and I don't like it I am NOT a fan of this feeling having surgery with no FMLA is not one of the smartest things that I've ever done but when your doctor says you have a tumor in your uterus and you're just gonna keep bleeding until you get it removed. You really wanna get it removed. And that's um, basically what happened. Before we found out what was wrong, I, um, it was really weird. It was almost like a miscarriage. 
in the fact that I was hurting a lot, a lot, a lot. And I'm not supposed to be able to get pregnant, okay? So I was hurting a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. I was hurting a lot. I know, I just wanna make sure you understand. I had the worst cramps I've ever had in my whole entire life. <clears throat> and I knew something was wrong. And I, I was loading my mail truck at the time. And I came in and I went to the bathroom because I was like, maybe I just really need to poop. <laughs> Just what I was thinking and um, I peed or whatever and then when I stood up it was just wow it was like the fuck is that and then um, I went out and did my route I had to go to Bilo it was on my route and get like some pads and stuff and I bled from that day pretty much until my surgery and um, that was like in June or July I think July probably anyway um, and I cramped and I cramped and it like the cramps were so bad like I could be feeling really great one day and be smiley and happy me and then all of a sudden like I feel like I'm just getting stabbed like it was the worst pain ever you guys and it sucked so much I didn't call in sick one time during this whole time because of that and I powered through it and I was just like, I'm gonna get my surgery as soon as fucking possible because this is ridiculous. And although I feel like it warranted that, you know, you know what I was going through really warranted getting the surgery done as soon as possible, I kind of wish I would have waited. And the only reason I say that is because finances. But thank God I'm married and um, thank goodness because I couldn't imagine doing it without at least a little bit of income. And my husband has been working six days a week to try to make overtime and so we can afford for me to stay home for six weeks. He doesn't want me to go back next week part-time, but I feel like I really, really need to. We'll just have to see what the doctor says tomorrow, huh? Um. So yeah, I have a list of things that I need to get done and I have not been doing them. I've been putting them off and I don't know if it's just because I've been like sitting at home and like the only time I get out of my house is when I drive the kids to school. So I have to take them to school and then I pick them up, which they get picked up at three different times. So like in the morning, it's like I, um, I take them and then like in the afternoon I pick up one at one o'clock because he's in half days because he um, he has enough credits to graduate early or go to half days and he wanted to do half days so I pick him up at one so I leave my house at like 1240 and then I pick up the next one I have to leave at like 230 and then the next one um, at 320 so like I, I feel like all I'm doing is like trying to get a couple things done next thing you know um, I go pick up one and then I get home. I don't really have time to do anything. That's just kind of how I felt. I don't have time to do anything. So then I go get him and then I don't feel like I have time to do anything. I go get her and then I come home and cook and um, clean up and do dishes. Like, and I just feel like I can't get anything done because of um, time, but also because of the pain and discomfort that I've been in, but um, I have been not doing anything the last couple days and I haven't been in as much pain. So I'm hoping that um, today I'm going to be able to clean and get some things done and, uh, and not be hurting. So that's what I'm gonna try and do today. I have a list in there, although I feel overwhelmed and I'm like, where do I start? You know what I mean? So. Yep, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much my hysterectomy and my experience and my recovery and all of that. And uh, I just wanted to share that with you guys. Now, I will tell you, I had some really good, like some really high spirited days. And then I had some just, I'm really exhausted. 
and just want to be in bed and sleep all day days. I don't know why, I don't know why this is so hard on me. Like, I, f I feel like I just have so much on my mind, you know what I mean? And I know I'm just sitting here doing makeup, but for some reason, doing this makes me feel better. Um, which um, is another reason why I was like, um, I'm gonna start a new channel um, for makeup while I'm off because uh, number one, I can just sit there on my butt and do it, but number two, um, my last channel used to be like makeup and now it's not and I really really miss doing it and I don't really know why I just really like it um, part because I feel like if you guys do check this video or other videos out then it may help you but um, you know help you with makeup let's do makeup together I'm I'm not like um, a beautiful like Com like completely sexy woman that everybody's gonna be like, oh my God, I wanna be like her. Um, I feel like I'm cute. I'm a cute, thick girl. I'm 36, I'm a mom, you know? But um, I I don't know. My self-confidence has taken a hit since I've been off. I've also gained nine pounds. And I feel like the reason that I gained nine pounds is because I have been instructed to sit all day and although at first I didn't have much of an appetite, by the end, I ha have just wanted sugar all the time. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty much uh, the gist of my time off is uh, I hurt a lot for four and a half weeks and I couldn't do anything even though like I wanted to get so much done because when I'm at work, like I literally work so, so much and I know I'm not gonna have time to get things organized and done um, once I get back to work because um, Christmas and the post office. Um, yeah, Christmas and the post office, that's why. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I just, maybe while I'm working half days, if I am allowed to work half days, maybe I'll be able to come home and get some things done or um, I'll probably work in the mornings though, so I will probably go to work, come get the kids, and then um, come home and hopefully get some things done. Who knows? But um, that's why I'm doing makeup this morning so early because um, sometimes doing makeup kind of like gets me motivated to get through my day. And I'm sorry that I kind of seem kind of like blah. I want to um, start being more like myself in my videos, but um, honestly, I'm, I cuss a lot and I'm pretty um, loose um, when it comes to like talking about silly, funny, sexual things. You know what I mean? I don't know. I'm just like, a f I like to think I'm a fun person. Obviously not um usually like in front of my children do I talk about things like that but they're not on here watching me so maybe I should um start being more myself um in my mouth yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna try and be more like myself and more like bubbly and stuff but like I said like right now after my hysterectomy I'm just kind of like been feeling I've been like in my feelings I've got so much on my mind and so many things that like I'm constantly thinking of and stressing about so that might be also a little bit why I'm a little less myself so hopefully that goes away <laughs> you guys like that you can see like my um, my sports bra and my tank top I am like looking fly for you today uh, I just wanted to get some makeup on and talk to you about my hysterectomy um, I, um, did you guys, have you guys ever had a hysterectomy? Are you gonna have a hysterectomy? Um, let me know in the comments down below. If you like me, if you like this eye look using the Huda Beauty eyeshadow palette or my face using all the other things. I also used this, um, Sephora glitter thing. I got it in like a, like a Christmas pack and there's like four or five of them that come in the pack, but I just started using this yesterday and I really like it so far. It's very sparkly. I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's very sparkly. And um, and yeah, I'm gonna put on my sparkle lip gloss because this is my my favorite lip gloss, and it smells so so good. Um, it's like um, kind of like a coffee smell, like a vanilla coffee.
I've been trying to build content because I just started this um, channel so if you guys like this video um, if you like me please subscribe um, if you don't mind some cursing and some inappropriate comments and um, and things like that I'm sure that's gonna be to come <laughs> when I'm more like myself and more like you know less complaining <laughs> then um, then yeah that's probably going to be coming up I'm just gonna start to like loosen up you know but um but for now let's play with makeup and um talk about girly stuff and um and yeah subscribe because it's free and it's really nice and maybe it'll make me feel a little better <laughs> thank you and have a good day guys bye <laughs> Thank you.